So here we are with part three of our review of the Canon M50. Stick around. Today, we're going to be doing some night photography, and I'm going to talk about the images that we shot. And we went to um, Liberty State Park in New Jersey, a bunch of photographers. We had a great night, and I'm going to show you some of the images in the computer here and some close-up comparisons. So stick around. So we made a plan to go into the city. Uh, we picked up some friends. Then we picked up another friend who was here on business in Manhattan, down by the Trade Center. We fought through the traffic for three hours. And then we got to Liberty State Park where a couple of more of our friends met us down there. I'm gonna put links to some of their uh, Instagram accounts in the uh, description here if you wanna check out their photography. But it was a group of you know seven or eight very good landscape photographers. And all of us were there to shoot the city skyline from Liberty State Park. Liberty State Park is just across the river from Lower Manhattan and you get a fantastic view of the Freedom Tower and Lower Manhattan and the Statue of Liberty is off to the side. And then from the other side of the park, you can shoot the back of the Statue of Liberty. So it, it's a great place to go. It was freezing cold. Uh, we had planned on shooting a whole bunch of video there and talking about it, but it was really uh, a cold night. And to be honest with you, when you get a bunch of photographers together, we really just had a good time um, socializing, you know, talking and comparing gear and talking photography. And some of us were meeting for the first time. So we, it was like a get to know you kind of a thing. And it was really great. And that part of it, we had a, we really enjoyed. We didn't get a lot of video footage. Actually, we got no usable footage from that night. But I'm going to talk about the images we actually shot. So I'm going to go into the computer here. And these were all shot off a tripod. These were all shot long exposures. Some of them were HDRs where a few images were merged together. Some of them are single shots. But these are my images out of my Canon M50 with Eric's 24 to 70 millimeter lens. And then the same framing and shot with my Canon, uh, with my Nikon, getting all these numbers and everything mixed up, but my Nikon D750 with my Tamron 24 to 70 millimeter lens. So it's the same focal lengths. We use the speed booster on the M50 so that the focal lengths would be equal. And we shot the raw file. So I'm gonna compare, when we go into the computer here, I'm gonna compare the original shot, the finished edited shot. I tried to edit the colors and everything so they were similar. And, and then I'm gonna zoom in so you can see how sharp they are. But there's not a big difference, to be honest with you. And if I showed you them both side to side without zooming in and telling you which one is which, I think you'd have a hard time figuring out which images are which. This is what I will say after using the M50 with all of these little comparisons we did, shooting it here and there, the lenses make all of the difference. Spend your money on lenses. Camera bodies come and go, but these lenses will just go with you from one camera body to another. So as you get better as a photographer, as you change what you want, as the technology and the sensors get better, the, the good lens is just going to be able to carry you through. I, I mean, I have lenses that I've been shooting with now for seven, eight, nine years, and they look fine. And I've gone through two or three or four camera bodies with those same lenses, and they all look great. So let's jump in the computer and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about and we're gonna, uh, I'll do some like screen captures and we could see and compare the images. Okay, we're in the computer and I made a small collection of these two images. Now we took a, quite a few images over the course of the night but these two are the ones that were the closest in framing and everything else. I took these just about at the same time. There was a little difference in the cloud cover but they were for the most part taken around the same time, actually two minutes apart. So here's the first one, and this was shot on the M50, and this is the shot on the Nikon D750. If you go back and forth, they look fairly similar. There's not much of a difference. So let's start with the Canon. Okay, here we are in the de uh, develop module. Now I'm going to click Y on my screen to give you a look at what it looked like. This was straight out of the camera, and this is the edited version. Okay, if I do the same thing with the Nikon, it's really very similar. So here's the straight out of the camera and here's the edited version. The Nikon was a little cooler straight out of the camera, so I warmed it up a little bit. Here's the Canon again. You can see the Canon was a little bit warmer straight out of the camera, the Nikon. You know, it, it, they, they're fairly close, but these are quick fixes in editing. Just a little tweak of the white balance and it brings it right back up. So here's the Canon and then zoomed in. 
it's pretty sharp. I mean, you really see all the detail in the buildings, this little sun star here. Now, if I do the same thing, here is the Nikon. Same thing, sharp. There's really very little difference if I jump in between them. Again, this is the Canon, and here's the Nikon. So, let me uh, roll through these. Here are the raw versions of the Canon side-by-side. -side. This is the unedited, here's the edited. And here's the Nikon side-by-side. -side. Raw, straight out of the camera, and then edited. To me, there's not a huge difference. Um, they both really performed well. And, you know, when you zoom out, I would be comfortable printing either one of these large. You know, I don't think that there would be a, a huge difference either way. And if I have to be honest with you, I actually prefer the look of the Canon. It has a, a warmer tone to me, something about it. Here's the Nikon. So really similar, really, really similar. And Eric shot some images also. You know, they, he shot them with his uh, 5D4 and with the M50. And I'll drop them in here. And as you can see, it's also very similar. So this camera as a whole does really well against the big expensive DSLRs. So looking at these images at 100%, I don't know, there may be a minute difference, but that also could have been my error with the camera because it was a windy night. And, you know, sometimes, you know, one exposure might have been a little bit longer than the other. You know, the lighting changes. These weren't shot at the exact same second. So, you know, things change. The clouds move. I wasn't unhappy with either of them. The Nikon, I thought the images straight out of the camera were a little more bluish. And I thought the Canon had a warmer tone to them straight out of the camera. Uh, but after that, you can do what you want with them in the computer and you're going to get similar results. I thought this would be a good time to add in an ISO test. I have the cameras here, everything's set up, so I went and I shot some pictures on the table back there. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little model of a trailer. So I did ISO tests, and I'm going to jump into the computer here to compare that also. So the comparison is the Canon M50 with the Tokina 11-16 to lens, both at f4, the Nikon D750 with the Nikon 16-35, to both at the same focal length, both at f4. And I went through the entire ISO range from 100 up to 25,600. And I'm gonna go into the computer here and I'm gonna show you the results. Okay, so I'm here in the computer and I'm going to show you an ISO test I did with this camera. So the M50, uh, this is at 100 ISO right here. And I went all the way up to 25,600. And then I did the same thing with my Nikon D750. And uh, we're going to compare and see how they look. So here it is. And you know what's interesting here? When we were shooting out at night, the Canon seemed like the warmer image. But here in my house, this is the Canon right here. And this is the Nikon which has a much warmer look. So I'm not really sure why that is, but uh, I tried to keep the settings the same. All right, so here it is at ISO 100, and we zoom in, nice and clean. Here's the Nikon, ISO 100, nice and clean. ISO 400, ISO 400. 1600, still pretty clean. 1600 on the Nikon. This is completely usable. You could see this looks great. And even if I kick the shadows up a little bit, still looks pretty good. Okay, so let's go to 6400. Starting to see a little bit of noise in the image. You can see it in the dark parts. It's starting to show up. Here's 3200 for the Nikon. And here's 6400 for the uh, Nikon. Okay, the Nikon still looks really clean. At 6400, there's nothing in the dark parts. Let's go up to 12,800. Starting to get really ugly looking here. This is where you'd really have to use your noise reduction in your uh, in Lightroom here in the software. And as you can see, the image is getting degraded. Let's do the same thing with the Nikon. 
full frame Nikon still looking much better. This is still a very usable image here. Let's go to 25,600. This is the Canon. And this is the Nikon. So here's the image zoomed out. So at 25,600, here's the difference between 100 and 25,000. This is at 25,600 ISO. This is at 100. I mean, this is not great, but it's not horrendous. Let's do the same thing here. Here's the Canon at 100 and the Canon at 25,000. Big difference. So as you can see here, the uh, full frame sensor really makes a difference. As you can see, the results were pretty interesting. The uh, Canon sensor, being a crop sensor, cannot handle the low light situations as well as a full frame sensor. And that's pretty much what I expected. So if you are a low light shooter, you're shooting weddings, you're shooting parties inside catering halls, maybe you're shooting sports inside a gym, this, you know, it's gonna do okay. But if you want the best performance, you're gonna to wanna to use a full frame uh, camera, for sure. Now these might have done a little bit better. Now the Tokina that is on my M50 here actually opens up another stop. And I didn't do that because I was trying to compare apples to apples. But the Nikon is stabilized. So there's, there's little things that, you know, little differences. So you might be able to get better performance out of the Tokina because you can let more light in, but you'd be able to handhold the Nikon a little bit better because it's stabilized. So just a little comparison, but at least you get an idea of how the sensor handles the ISO range. But for under normal shooting conditions, and certainly if you're outside, I think the um, uh, the Canon does well. The full frame is just a little bit better. The, like I said at the beginning, the lenses are really what, what are gonna make the difference. So after you saw the video that we did with the portraits and Eric you know, showed you close up how a, f a $100 50 millimeter lens and a you know fifteen hundred dollar eighty five millimeter lens give you a similar portrait result. Th these cameras are good. This M fifty is a good starter camera, and you don't have to get the most expensive glass to start. But if you get a decent lens, read reviews, make sure you get the focal length you want. You know, I would say it's it's a great camera to get started with, and it can grow with you. If you want to spend the money on lenses and and use this body for a few years, you're going to be fine. If you're going to use it for video, it's fine. And the, the still images we're getting out of it so far have been great. The images I took in Lancaster of the train and, you know, that's a moving object that attract and they're super sharp. So I don't know what else you really need. The one issue that we did have with this was trying to f shoot fast, but we did that in single shot. So after every shot, the camera shows you an image and then, you know, you, you can take another shot. You know, that we turn the image review off and it does seem to shoot faster. But if you put it in burst mode, you can fire through 15 you know, shots and get a, a bunch of shots in a row before the buffer fills. So there are definitely workarounds with this camera. So for $500, this is a great camera body, you know, both of us feel. And then you just add lenses to it. The, the lens that I'm shooting this video on is a Tokina 11 to 16. Now this is a wide angle lens. And with the Canon adapter, this lens is going to give me a field of view of about 16 to 24 which is a perfect wide landscape lens. It's gonna be perfect for these types of shots, vlogging. Um, it's a 2.8 constant aperture lens, so it's gonna be great in low light. So this is a really good lens for this camera body, and it was $300. So th there's some really good lenses. You know, my equivalent focal length in my Nikon camera to this is a $1,200 lens. Uh, and it's only an F4, it's not even an F2.8. So there are some advantages maybe to using a, a crop sensor in some instances. You can definitely get some really good gear for a, a less expensive price. So we're going to continue using this. And if there's anything that we come across, we'll definitely make another video about it. If you have Canon glass already and you're looking for something smaller and maybe you want to get some of the M mount lenses as a quick, you know, carry around kind of camera, but then you also want to be able to use your good glass that you already own, this this will be a great tool for that because I know I'm going to be using this camera more when I'm just out with my family and I can maybe throw it in my wife's bag or in a jacket pocket or in a little bag or something where my DSLR is big and clunky and the lenses are big and clunky. So 
all things to think about. It was really fun making these videos and we learned a lot about this little camera and I hope you've enjoyed these videos. We'll get back into our regular editing and you know, whatever else we're going to do. Uh, but this was good. And uh, I'm gonna maybe do a review on this uh, Takina lens next and kind of compare it to the, you know, more expensive, you know, Nikon glass and see how that, how it fares because it's one fourth of the price of the same focal length in a full frame camera lens. So that should be an interesting one too. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel if you want more of these videos. Click the little notification bell if you'd like to be notified whenever we're uploading a new video. Okay, we'll see you in the next one.